Okay. Uh, welcome everyone to the May edition of the Microsoft Federal Business Applications webinar. My name is Ryan Williams. I am a business applications technical specialist with Microsoft. Uh, and we have some amazing content for you today uh, and some demonstrations. So before we dive in, I'd just like to take a second to go over through uh, a couple of important guidelines. If you've been to any of our events before, you know that we have a digital code of conduct, which we do take seriously. Um, I know this can be a lot to take in at one, all at once, so I will tell you how Bing Chat summarized this for a third grader. Microsoft wants everyone to be nice to each other at their events, and if someone is not being nice, they will be asked to leave. So thank you. <laughs> uh, just so you're not surprised, uh, you can expect to hear from us after today's session. Uh, we will follow up with um, content relevant to the uh, this and future BizApps webinar events. That might include things like links to our recordings once they get posted online, uh, invitations to future events, things of that nature. Um, if you do prefer not to receive communications, you can simply reply back and we'll make sure to remove uh, your data and name off of our list. Speaking of the recordings, uh, you can find an archive of all of our past events on our Microsoft Federal BizApps GitHub site. Um, you can just click the link on the screen and you'll see all of our posted all of our videos uh, posted as public time stamped videos on YouTube. Uh, feel free to watch on 2x speed. And if you enjoyed today's content, please feel free to share it with your colleagues. Just a few logistical notes for today's session. Um, uh, during the presentation, Sorry, during the feature presentation, we're going to be leaving the guest cameras and mics off, uh, but we do encourage you to ask questions and make comments in the chat. Um, we have experts monitoring and answering there in real time. After our featured speakers during the Q&A portion of the session, we're going to turn off the recording. We're going to allow you to come off of mute, ask your questions uh, and get that live interactions. Um, the only thing is we would ask, please raise your hand and wait for us to call on you uh, before uh, going ahead and answering your question. Sorry, asking your question. And I know we're all here today to learn about data obfuscation, uh, but it's never too early to plan ahead. Um, just to give a quick plug for next month's webinar series, uh, it will feature Douglas Hubbard, who was a manager at Transport Canada. Um, if you're like me and you didn't know, Transport Canada is the Canadian equivalent of our Department of Transportation. Um, the topic will be the trials, tribulations, and triumphs of a power platform center of excellence in the federal government sphere. Um, Douglas's presentation will cover how the center of excellence came to be, their successes, their struggles, and the lessons learned along the way. So mark your calendars for June 21st and expect an invite from us soon. So that brings us to the featured topic of the month, which is our data redaction and obfuscation accelerator. Uh, let me just start by saying as a resource fully aligned with our federal customers, redaction has always been a personal topic of interest for me. Um, I've had conversations about redaction in every context, really. Document redaction, image redaction, human in the loop style redaction, FOIA redaction, the list goes on. Um, at one point, I even developed uh, a proof of concept solution that blended Azure Cognitive Services PII detection, Power Automate RPA, and desktop Adobe Acrobat for redaction. Um, really, the common thread throughout all of my conversations was the same. It's relatively straightforward to scan the documents, do the OCR, detect the PII. It's the document manipulation portion that was quite complex to me. Um, no matter the solution, I was always kind of left right at the last step where I'm wondering, how do I get the black bars onto the page and cover up these you know, dirty words, so to speak? Um, and to be honest, for a while, I didn't have a really good scalable solution. Um, but you know, if you can see where this is going, you can imagine my delight when one day I caught wind of something that was circulating internally, which was the data redaction and obfuscation accelerator. Um, you know, this thing is basically like the holy grail, right? Not just putting the black bars over the words, but 
injecting synthetic data, matching fonts, matching backgrounds, um, things I didn't even know I could ask for, right? It could do. Um, so now, of course, after the initial excitement of me discovering this war off, you know, I, I was kind of left with the question, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't be surprised that a team of world-class developers and data scientists can put together something like this. But um, really, it's the question was, can someone like myself without a developer background be able to use this? Um, you know, personally, I fit squarely into the low code world. I spend my days, you know, within the power platform, not developing custom code using Azure services. So um, you might have heard us talk about something called the fusion development team concept in Power Platform. We want to enable citizen developers to be able to leverage assets that the pro code developers are creating just like this, right? So to prove this out, we were able to build a low code Power Apps Canvas app front end um, that worked with this accelerator in just a couple of days. Um, and so to me, that was really reaffirming to see all of this come together so quickly. Um, really showcase the ability of the power platform to unite those low code and pro code worlds. Um, and it also made me think that this is something that would be relevant to you uh, and this webinar audience. Um, so with that, I want to introduce the real stars of the show, um, the team that brought this all to life and the makers of the data redaction and obfuscation accelerator. Um, we have with us today, Brian Ortiz, Brian Ostick, Jana Valiva, and Ari Goldberg. And so I will let you take it away, Brian. Thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you so much for that intro. Let's switch over to our deck here if we could. Fantastic. One moment there. Hopefully everyone can see the deck there. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, hello, folks. Thank you for joining the webinar today. Thank you, Ryan, for the intro. I am Brian Ortiz, a technical program manager within the Industry Solutions Engineering Organization of Microsoft. Uh, and over the past year, Industry Solutions Engineering has partnered with our data and AI team on the Data Obfuscation Accelerator, Accelerator we'll be presenting today. This solution originally stemmed from a customer request within the financial services vertical. The customer in that instance sought a solution that would assist in protecting their customer's personal identifiable information found on numerous document images that they ultimately needed to use for their development work. Given the amount of regulation in the financial services, uh, it was really critical that our customer protect their own customer's data from vulnerabilities that may arise by allowing just a lot of folks, right, to have access to these restricted documents. At that time, we weren't able to proceed with the customer because while data obfuscation is a common occurrence within database work, the technology to perform redaction obfuscation on document images is much more complex and just wasn't available at that time. So seeing that missed opportunity, we decided that our internal team could tackle that obstacle. We started gathering some uh, some use cases where this type of technology was actually being asked for, from personal medical information for folks in the healthcare industry to folks like yourselves in the government services needing to redact and obfuscate highly sensitive data to protect our federal employees and, and our hundreds of millions of citizens. So through this research, we found one common theme. The few solutions that were available were mainly focusing on trying to randomly recognize what was PII within images. The result of those solutions were usually slow to respond and they held inconsistencies in their ability to recall all the needed data since those solutions, again, are just trying to recognize what is PII on their own. But from the use cases we gathered, we found that most of our customers already had an idea of what data they wanted either masked or obfuscated. So meaning apart from the document image with the PII on it, they also had a list or database of some sort that contained the PII they wanted to find within the actual images of the documents. Given this known data, we knew that we could then attack this problem from a different angle rather than just trying to figure out what was PII on an image. 
Our approach tests the document images against known data sets, allowing our solution to provide synthetic data sets that can be safely used in our customers' development and testing work that is realistic to the original images they need for their workflow and data that holds the same referential integrity and distribution characteristics of the documents they're using without them having to compromise their customers' data privacy. Our goal was to create a solution to meet that pain point. Today, we'll have two of our data scientists, Yana and Brian, uh, explaining our solution a bit further, as well as one of our engineers, Ari, presenting a demo of that very solution. We'll be going through our presentation. We'll be sure to leave plenty of time for you folks to ask any questions at the end that you may have. Uh, and I also would like to know, as I've just placed a slide up on the screen, that if our solution seems interesting to you and you'd like to learn more, or you'd like to see how it can be applied for your specific need, you're welcome to relay that interest to your account representative, or feel free to reach out to me directly. I've placed my email there, and uh, I can certainly assist you with setting that up for you. And with that, folks, let's jump in, and I'd like to hand it over to our first data scientist, Yana. Yana? Thank you, Brian. Sure. So um, our mission is uh, ultimately to help to make the innovation safe, secure, and compliant. Data Obfuscation Accelerator is a modular and generalizable solution for unstructured documents that solves the problem of replacing sensitive data with non-PII content. And it's important to highlight that it's a very generic solution that does not really require much customization. We've tested it on various data sets such as W2s, IDs, CDC cards, and so on, and we will share the results in this presentation. And now we'll walk you through the architecture and components of the, uh, of the accelerator. So let's start with some definitions uh, to set up the stage. Um, data redaction is the process of masking sensitive information with uniform colored box. It can be just a uniform colored box or it can also be a background color box, but the result remains the same. The data becomes useless to malicious actors. And you can see here on the slide, we have Connor and um, their PII on the left side of the slide. And then on the right side of the slide, it just disappears. So this document does not contain any sensitive information anymore. It's redacted. And it's also important to highlight that redaction is the first step in the process of data obfuscation. Data obfuscation is a process of replacing sensitive information with realistic synthetic data. Developers, developers and testers, they need realistic data to build and test software, but they do not necessarily need to see the real data, right? They can see like obfuscated version of it. So in fact, we're trying to replace uh, sensitive information with realistic indistinguishable synthetic data. And uh, therefore, we're making the data useless to malicious actors, but at the same time useful for developers and testers. And again, back to our example, we see Connor here, then uh, the document was redacted, and then we also added synthetic information, synthetic data here. So we see that Connor uh, became fake. And this um, obviously is an obfuscated document that does not contain any sensitive information. Data obfuscation techniques are well established for structured data, such as tables, However, for unstructured data such as images or PDFs, it is still a challenge that we are aiming to solve. We built a product as a modular and generalizable pipeline that can cover multiple use cases. It consists of three layers. First layer is the redactor. Remember, replacing sensitive information with just uh, uniform colored boxes. Then we have layer two obfuscator, which uh, puts synthetic data instead of the uh, sensitive data. And then we have layer three mimicor uh, to fully mimic the original background of the document. Um, and this layer is still work in progress. Uh, let me walk you through the pipeline though. So um, specific work of our solution is that it takes PII, existing PII um, as an input. It can be an existing PII database, or it can also be an output of a PII extractor, such as Presidio or such as uh, Cognitive Services PII Detector. Um, then we also have the document itself as, a, as, the input of the, as the input of the solution. The document goes through OCR, and the results of the OCR help us 
in the PII finder component to locate all the PII in the, in the document. So what we're trying to do is based on the existing PII, we're trying to locate this existing PII in the document. And this is a very important step. The performance of the step is really important to make the data safe because here we're actually finding all the bounding boxes that contain potential, that contain PII data in the document. Uh, and once the data has been located, it goes to, it, to the redactor component, which basically puts uniform colored boxes on top of the sensitive data. It's important to mention that we are not just masking it. We are replacing pixels so the data cannot be recovered. The second layer is the obfuscator, and it works on top of the layer one. Uh, here we are generating the synthetic data first uh, in order to replace the sensitive data. It's also very important for us to uh, make sure that the style of the generated data is really close to the original document. So we need a font style recognizer component to make the, the data indistinguishable. Then we also have style refiner. This component basically allows us to preserve um, sophisticated layouts such as tables in the document and therefore keep the document as authentic as possible. And then the obfuscator component uh, basically compiles the outputs of, 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 of all the other components and imprints new synthetic data instead of the sensitive data. Uh, we also have mimic more level uh, layer, uh, which is supposed to fully mimic the original background of the document. So if there is this like sophisticated pattern on the background of the document, uh, this component is uh, supposed to basically mimic it to make the document, the uh, synthetic document, indistinguishable. And this layer is still work in progress. The pipeline has been has been developed with bring your own component idea in mind. So a user can bring their own OCR. In our solution, we used form recognizer, but the user can pretty much bring any other type of OCR. The user can bring other PII, uh, the, the user can bring their own PII extractor or PII database or replace any other components of the pipeline and easily integrate them by meeting established protocols. And also a user can develop like additional uh, components and easily integrate it in the, into the pipeline because it's a very modular and, gen and generali generalizable solution. Uh, with that, um, I will hand it over to Brian to cover layer one in details. Great, thanks. Let's first uh, take a step in and look at the redactor layer. One of the first tasks when redacting or obfuscating a document image is to extract all of the written text with an optical character recognition tool. As Jana mentioned, we make use of the Azure Form Recognizer for this OCR component. Form Recognizer has support for many languages and works well with on handwritten text and is con uh, constantly being improved. However, as we did develop the Obfuscation Accelerator as a modular toolkit, it is possible for you to bring your own OCR tool. The only requirement is that the response should follow the same protocol, indicating the bounding box for each uh, word individually on the document. Uh, it's also important to stress that the ability to redact or obfuscate depends on the ability to extract text from the document. This means that blurry images or a poor OCR tool will lead to poor results. The, the next component is the PII finder. Uh, and the PII finder takes in uh, the PII of interest and the OCR response and it essentially filters the OCR response to only include the pieces of information which contain uh, a match to the PII that we're looking for. Uh, it's essential that no PII is left unobfuscated or unredacted. And this is one of the most challenging aspects for us to test because nobody was able to give us labeled documents with real PII data. But we still wanted to know that the solution is working good, so we had to come up with our own data set to test it. The first data set, uh, we called the template data set, was synthetically generated by us and consisted of multiple template forms filled in with the names, addresses, and social security numbers of uh, fake values for these. And we wanted to see how many of the PIA instances our solution can find. To do this, we used the recall and precision as metrics. The recall metric 
looks at how many of the instances of the PI that exist in the document that we are able to find, essentially the fraction of the PI that we find. Precision, on the other hand, shows how many of all the instances that we say are PII actually are PII. In our template data set, our solution finds nearly 100% of the PII and only identifies a few items which are not PII as being PII. Uh, this was great, but we wanted to know if this will actually work, uh, if this is a generic solution, and if it will work for other documents uh, and other fields that we didn't design it for. Uh, through an internal Microsoft team, we were able to gain access to three additional already obfuscated data sets. Uh, one was a CDC vaccine card, one was an ID cards, and another was a W2 forms data set. Importantly, these new data sets had very different templates from the documents we had been looking at and different fields of PII than the, just the social security number, uh, name, and address that we were using before. Using all of the data sets, we're able to see that the um, recall is good. We're finding uh, in the 90th percentile for all of the data sets. Uh, and precision is also pretty good. Uh, you might notice that the precision for the ID cards data set is a little bit lower than the others. And we see that this happens uh, as an example uh, uh, for a document like this, where on blue, we've indicated the bounding boxes that uh, our solution identifies as being PII. And you can see a little bit in the background in red uh, are the boxes that uh, the labelers have said contain PII within the data set. And the, the labels didn't contain uh, information for the signature itself. So from a pure metric number uh, for precision, when we find the signature, that actually is hurting our precision score, even though, of course, we do actually want to find it. Uh, and all of the situations that we saw where the precision was low, it was in a situation like this. So really, the slow number is actually says that we're doing better than we would hope to. Um, so with all of that said, we do think that we have a solution that works very well on documents and is able to generalize to documents and PI that we have not seen before. We designed this finder to be a general solution and the facts that it works on data sets that have very different fields than our synthetic set and on a wide range of templates leaves us to believe that we do have this general uh, solution that we're looking for. The final component of the first layer is the redactor component. So after we've identified all of the PII within the document, we can then utilize the redactor component to completely remove the PII from the document. It's important to note that in this, we are not just adding a layer on top for masking, but we're actually changing the pixel values within the image itself. So it's not possible to go back and recover this information. And as we can see here, we're actually finding all of the different instances of the name uh, and address uh, in this document. Uh, and uh, I just want to reiterate and foreshadow uh, that because the PII finder is told what it is that it's looking for, we have the ability to detect and redact any type of PII field. Uh, this is going to be in contrast to what Jan is going to talk about next for the obfuscation. And with that, I will pass it back to you, Jan. Thank you so much, Brian. Uh, all right, so that layer two obfuscation. This layer basically replaces sensitive information with realistic synthetic data on top of the reduction layer. And for that, we need several components. We need to generate appropriate fake values. We need to generate appropriate style. We need to understand the, the appropriate style, such as font, font size, and so on, just to make sure that the content we produce is indistinguishable. And we also want to keep the document as authentic as possible so if there is a special layout or table, we want to preserve it to keep the document, again, indistinguishable. So let's start with the synthetic data generator component. The key feature of this component is to create replacement identities. We don't want to randomly generate a new identity each time we see a name. Instead, we want to replace an identity with another identity. Um, and in, in this example, you can see that for example, the name Joseph, Joseph appears two times in the document. So we want to replace it with the same name, right? Um, in red, uh, on top of the bounding box, you can see the, re the replacement generated by this component. And you can see that in both cases, it's pretty much the same replacement. 
Uh, we're trying to replace each word with a similar sized word. Uh, that allows us uh, to make the fields like the address to look natural. We currently support three different PII uh, types, which is names, addresses, and social security numbers. Um, but this list can be extended. Um, and I would like to highlight that redaction is available for all the types of the data. Um, an example can be found here. So we have email address that contains PII and we don't want any PII to make it through the process. So unsupported fields like this email address in this case is getting redacted. Again, redaction supports all the types of PII unlike obfuscation. Um, another important component is the font style recognizer component. Our goal is to replace PII with indistinguishable synthetic content. And for this, we need to match the font of the original content uh, when we generate the synthetic content. We use false, uh, font style recognizer component to identify exact font of the text in the document or its closest match. Uh, in this example, you see that the original font of the document was liberation set, we predicted Arial and the fonts look pretty much the same, like very similar to each other. Um, and it, they, they are indistinguishable pretty much. Um, besides that, we also recognize font size and font attributes, such as if the font is italic or bold uh, or something like this. Another component that I would like to cover today is the style refinement component. To make the result even more indistinguishable, we preserve the structure of the original document. So if there is a like lines like you have in multiple in different forms or tables like you like, for example, social security numbers, uh, you have usually have like a little table to put each uh, number of social security number in a separate box. Um, and as you can see here on the slide, we support both vertical and horizontal lines and tables. Um, in this example, we detected an uh, email here, and if you just go and remove it, we corrupt the file, right? So you see that the line here disappears and the file does not look realistic anymore. So thanks to the style refinement component, we managed to preserve the original structure of the form. You can see here that the line is still in place. And so what happens for social security number in, this ex in the example on the right side of the slide? Uh, if you just go ahead and replace a social security number with uh, a synthetic value, you can see that the table disappears and the document does not look authentic anymore. But thanks to this component, we managed to preserve the original table structure and we keep, document, keep the document as authentic as possible. Um, layer 3, MIMI 4, is supposed to fully mimic the original background of the document. And again, this is a work in progress layer, uh, but we'll share a result of one of our pre preliminary experiments with you. Um, in this example, we are trying to replace South Africa by South Apple with, with South Apple. And you see there is a sophisticated pattern on the background here. And we want to keep the sophisticated pattern on the obfuscated document. So you can see here that we replace Apple uh, this replacement looks very natural. It's the same font, it's the same font size, and the background is still there. So the pattern is still there. Um, so we preserve background underneath, underneath the font. And for that, we use neural style transfer, um, and we're still experimenting on that. Now, uh, for the accelerated deployment options, I will hand it over to Ari. Great, thanks, Johanna. So um, there are a few deployment options available for the data obfuscation accelerator. We have a reference implementation of a batch processing pipeline that can be deployed to Azure. That pipeline fits nicely into fusion development scenarios where Power App developers can easily integrate their solutions with Azure services. You can also do local Azure function deploy development. And finally, you can do local experimentation with Jupyter Notebooks interacting with the data obfuscation Python library directly. Sorry, jumped the slide. Um, there are no significant hardware requirements. Uh, GPUs are not required. And for Azure deployments, the solution works well on standard Azure instance sizes. 
As far as software requirements go, there are only a few dependencies, including Azure Form Recognizer, which is used for the OCR process as discussed, a specific Tesseract version that's required for handling font detection, and note that a dev container is available for local development work. The following conceptual architecture diagram demonstrates one way to incorporate the data obfuscation Python library into a data processing pipeline. This will allow users to process large numbers of images in the cloud. Let me quickly walk you through the architecture from left to right. Starting with Azure Blob or file storage that contains the source images and their associated PII, an Azure function called the orchestrator is triggered by a power app which enqueues the source files. Another Azure function called the worker pulls the image files off the queue using a queue trigger, obfuscates the document images, and then stores the resulting document in the target storage account. By using this queuing pattern, the worker function will use target-based scaling, which provides a fast and intuitive scaling model. The function app in this architecture is containerized, which makes it easy to package all of the data obfuscation Python library dependencies in the container and store a version and deploy the container from Azure Container Registry. The only external Azure service that the worker function app is dependent on is Azure Form Recognizer. So this is just one example of how to incorporate the data obfuscation Python library into a data pipeline for batch processing. Other container and non-container based Azure compute services can be used to support other existing or greenfield architectures. I'm now going to share a simple recorded demo of a power app interacting with the data pipeline. For demonstration purposes, we're just showing one-off file processing, but this example can be extended to support batch processing as well. In this power app, a user can select a target image and its associated PII definition. Once the files are uploaded to the storage account, the user can select to obfuscate or redact the uploaded file. This will kick off the data pipeline and store the result in a target storage account and then show the original and processed image side by side in the UI. Let's see it in action. So here the user is selecting a PNG file and selecting a JSON file that contains the associated PII data. This happens to be a 1095 form. The files are being uploaded and then selecting the obfuscate function. As you can see in the 10, this 1099 form, the name, social security number, and street address, which have been specified in the PII JSON file, have been identified and replaced with synthetic data. Let's try the same process with a college application. I want to reemphasize that the data obfuscation accelerator can work with any type of document image and does not have to be specifically trained on a specific image, form, or document type, allowing us to easily demo a variety of images. Again, in this form, you can see that the name, social security number, and street address, excuse me, have been properly identified and replaced. Let's try another example using a classic W2 form. One thing I do want uh, one thing I do want to make note of is if the specified PII is not found in the document, the document is not processed and moved to the target storage. This ensures that no PII is accidentally leaked and the failure is logged for further investigation. Once again, you can see that the social security number, name, and street address have been identified and replaced. And note that the street address has been detected and replaced in multiple locations on the form. Let's try one last sample using redaction on an ID card. Here, the user is selecting a PNG file and selecting the associated JSON file that contains the PII data once again, but this time selecting redact. You can see that the name, document ID, document number, and signature have all been redacted based on the PII that was provided in the PII definition file. In summary, this was a quick demo to show the power of Fusion development and how you can easily integrate a power app with the data obfuscation accelerator pipeline solution. I'm now going to pass it back to Brian.
Thanks, Ari. Uh, thank you, Yana and Brian. That's always, I've been working on this over a year with these folks, and it's still exciting to watch these things go through. Uh, take a quick moment also to say thank you to the folks that you see listed there. Uh, we've had a lot of folks being, we have just a few folks presenting, but a lot of folks that were able to uh, help and, and made a big part of this uh, going through. Uh, and I'll obviously thank you to our leadership team for their support and, and guidance there. And one more slide to bring it back again, folks, if you think that this makes sense to you or some part of this could work with what uh, use case you're working with. Uh, my contact is my contact info is there. I would be more than happy to speak further or set up demos for you folks. Uh, also, reach out to your account representatives uh, and we can certainly uh, help in that manner as well. And with that.